take a deep breath, he said. Remember? He was checking your lung power. The power to create energy in the human body and maintain it under stress. The power to endure when the going is toughest and the man beside you is dropping in his tracks. The power to sustain life, too. For through the lungs, life-giving oxygen is introduced into the bloodstream. In the B-24 Liberator, the fuel and induction system is the equivalent of the human lung. Twelve self-sealing fuel cells are carried in the wing. Three for each engine, with auxiliary fuel cells in the outer wings for extra range. The proper mixture of air and fuel gives life to the huge engine. A fuel transfer unit and a transfer pump send fuel from one set of tanks to another. For each engine, there is an electric fuel pump and a shutoff valve. Any failure in the fuel and induction system of this liberator could be fatal. And don't think these men don't know it. During the 50-hour inspection of the B-24, the check of the fuel system is their responsibility. That's Sergeant Greve with the air compressor and Corporal Bender mounting the mechanic stand with his surgical instrument. Every 50 hours, it's Saturday night and bath time for the carburetor screen. You can pick up a lot of dirt traveling 10,000 miles on the double, so Bender removes the screen and passes it down to Greve into a bath of unleaded gasoline and dry her off with the air blast, blowing from the inside out. At the same time, Greed examines the screen carefully for brakes, dents, and foreign particles. And there goes the carburetor screen back into place, clean as the skin you love to touch. Oil, as specified in the tech order for the throttle shaft bearings, and grease for lubricating the mixture control latch mechanism. He uses it sparingly because too much will only gather dust. Meanwhile, Greed keeps himself busy by loosening the wing nuts and taking out the main fuel strainer. A lot of water has flowed under the bridge and about as much gasoline through this strainer since it had its last check. Just as he did with the carburetor screen, Greed has to keep an eye peeled for danger signs. Water, dents, rips in the mesh, or rubberized particles that would indicate a deteriorating gas tank. There's no structural defect, so Greed gives the fuel strainer and its cups their 50-hour bath, blowing as usual from the inside out. Satisfied? Better be sure, Greed. Good enough. In replacing the strainer, see that the gasket is in good shape, or there'll be the danger of fuel leakage. Remember, for the Liberator's long-range bomber crew, every drop of gas is worth its weight in blood. You know what they say, an airplane is held together with safety wires. Now that his men are ready to inspect the fuel lines for leaks, Crew Chief Kelly lends a helping hand by sending pressure throughout the system. He checks the mixture control to idle cutoff, turns on the master switch, the AC power switch, and the fuel booster pump. All ready for the fuel line. First, the hose clamp for tightness and safety. Come on in, Bender. We can always use a good man. Those clamps should be finger tight. No more, no less. Tighter, they'd pierce the hose. Looser, you'd have a leak. Check the hose for general condition and firm anchorage and for the telltale blue aniline dye that denotes gas leak, and every hose clamp for tightness and safety. Then a thorough visual check on the line. Beware of sharp bends or cracks and damage from vibration or chafing. Are they anchored securely? Are they free of leaks? Fine. Out in the open again for the primer inspection. To check the primer, you have to remove the line at the manifold, being careful not to kink the tubing. And when that's done, let Crew Chief Kelly know you're ready for it. Kelly flicks on the primer switch. Then if gasoline discharges through the line, Bender knows the primer system is OK. In replacing the line at the manifold, be just as careful as before with the tubing. And don't let the wrench be rough with the fitting. 
To check the oil dilution system, Kelly pushes the oil dilution switch. And the spouting gasoline from the oil dilution line tells Bender that the system works and will keep the engine oil from congealing when the Liberator stands in freezing weather. Handy for those dawn takeoffs in wintertime. When he's turned off the booster motor and the rest of the switches, Kelly comes down the catwalk to check the operation of the fuel selector cock. He tries them in all positions, making sure that there's no binding. For more of the same, please, Kelly. And then with the fuel and induction system checked, Back to the pilot's compartment for his part in the supercharger inspection. No, they're not looking for rain. It's a visual inspection of the nozzle box for cracks or excessive oil leakage from the bucket wheel. Greaves checks the clearance between the bucket wheel and the nozzle diaphragm with the thickness gauge specified in his CO. Excessive variation as he rotates the wheel would mean it was warped and worthless. But this one looks good for another hundred billion revs. So Greed selects another thickness gauge from his collection. He flips it between the bucket wheel and the cooling cap for the second clearance check. Snug as a bug all the way around. And now for the final clearance check. Greed takes the prescribed thickness gauge and tests for clearance between the buckets. Excessive clearance is the warning of a bad bucket, a potential weapon of destruction ready to fly out from the whirling wheel like the slug from a Colt 45. But no danger of that with this baby. While he's there, Greed tests the cooling cap for security of mounting and examines the studs for tightness and proper safety. Bender checks the entire supercharger for security of mounting. You don't take chances with a merry-go-round that turns up over 20,000 revs a minute. He inspects the supercharger regulator to see that it's mounted firmly and properly safely. And then when he's ready to test the linkage, it's time to operate the supercharger control. Let her go, Kelly. Close visual examination assures Bender that the linkage is moving freely and has full travel. The waste gate for freedom of operation. He feels for plenty of free side movement so that when the system gets red hot and expands, it will still move smoothly. When he has lubricated the bearing with penetrating oil, the supercharger regulator system is set, and the big engine will get the right amount of air at all altitudes. To clean the balance line, Bender pries deep into it with some fine gauge wire, just as though he's cleaning his pipe. While Greed gives the elbow a going over to remove any accumulation of carbon, The harmonica technique isn't musical, but it's sanitary. And elbows don't come any thicker or spanner than this one, which Greve now puts back into place. And now the intercooler. Twigs and weeds, debris sucked into the passageway during takeoffs and landing. Right now, Bender's thinking of the radiator on his 10-ton truck after those long hauls through Arizona way back when. Greve checks the movement of the intercooler shutters with Kelly cooperating in the cockpit. Music to Greed's ears, and all's well with a supercharger and intercooler. Moving on to the oil system, Greed gives his attention to the oil cooler. He makes sure the core isn't clogged, that there are no dents or leaks, particularly around the compensating relief valve. If there were a leak, chances are it would be due to a faulty gasket, a cinch to replace. Visually, he inspects the security of the cooler and the security and wear of the air duct. Then just one more check for firm mounting. Solid as Gibraltar. And how about the oil supply tank? Not a budge. It's in there securely. See that it's properly padded for those long, grueling hours of vibration and that the straps will hold it firm through any violent maneuver. A loose oil tank isn't the pilot's idea of fun over Tokyo or Berlin. The supporting straps are also tested for toughness and strength. Each oil line is given individual attention. Greed knows that a little crack in an oil line can cause a big crack up in a liberator. He checks for security of attachment, line clamps for general condition, spacing and tightness. And the vent lines are explored with the same keen eyes and fingers. Our two specialists are unable to make an important diagnosis by the removal of the stump plug. 
If Greed found metal particles in the oil, it would be warning that the husky engine was chewing itself to pieces. Nothing dangerous here, but there may be in the oil screen which Bender is trying to persuade out of its resting place. While he's removing the screen, his fingers operate the poppet valve to see that it'll work in case the screen clogs up. Anyone in the bathtub? It's all yours, Bender. Unleaded gas, then an application of air pressure from the inside out, and a brush up for the cap, too. Oh, there. That may be the good earth bender, but it doesn't sit well on the oil screen. That's better. And now it's ready to be replaced. The whole painstaking inspection would be so much lost motion if Bender didn't get the screen back in correctly. The boys aren't quite finished yet. There's a little matter of repeating the inspection on three more engines before they merit crew chief Kelly's initials in form 41B. The fuel system is functioning properly for all four mammoth engines, giving life great liberators. Life energy, and the power to endure under stress. 